Welcome everybody to Random Junk Reviews Fallout 4, where ghouls are actually scary now. Ah! Come on everyone, Fallout 4 doesn't need any introduction. You already know what this is and what this is about, unless you've been living under a rock that is. But Fallout 4 is an open world post-apocalyptic RPG where it's the future and yet it feels like it's stuck in the past. Think of it as an alternate timeline of the world and especially America, since it takes place in Boston, but more on that later. This is my first AAA title review ever. <clears throat> a AAA title means that the game was developed by a massive development team in terms of budget and levels of promotion. I really like the accent. Sorry. Thanks, Wikipedia. Yeah, I actually didn't know that. If you have played any of the recent previous Fallouts, like Fallout 3 or New Vegas, then you kind of know what Fallout's about and how it's played. It's developed by Bethesda and released on consoles and PC, of course. This being a AAA title means that it's not an inexpensive indie game like my games prior. This is priced at the full price tag of $59.99. I've been playing this game to death and have amassed so many hours, over 80 hours of gameplay so far. I have barely scratched the surface and it may have bitten more than I could chew at first since it's taken me this long to review but that's okay since the game is really long. This game has been hyped to death and has dramatically changed. Some say for better, some say for worse. I am here to remind you that it has been 5 years since the last Fallout game, New Vegas. Let's find out if there is any truth in those who say that it has improved versus those who say it has worsened. Let us journey to the commonwealth and open our vault and decide whether it's worth exploring exploring or just waiting in our vault the whole time. The opening cutscene introduces us to the world of Fallout, which is very much like our own. Right after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, America uses atomic energy for everything like fusion-powered cars and domestic robots, alongside portable computers. Shortages in resources and overconsumption led to competing world powers over resources and an arms race of nuclear weapons and Cold War-like tactics. It is the year 2077 and you are an ex-soldier who served your country and you are now living peacefully with your wife and son. Aided by Codsworth, your robot butler, until a mysterious vault tech representative asks you to join a vault shelter designed to allow privileged families to live in peace in case of nuclear war. Almost immediately after agreeing and coming back to the TV, reports of attacks with nuclear bombs start to fill the news. You immediately run away from your house with your family. Luckily, you were given a spot due to your service in the military, while everyone else is left to fend off for themselves, even the vault representative. A nearby nuclear warhead explodes. Just as you are about to die, you are able to narrowly escape just in time. I will stop here, I don't want to reveal any more story as it is best for you to experience it yourself, but eventually you do emerge back out into the wasteland, obviously, and everything is in shambles and ruins. The story in Fallout 4 is an incredible one and almost chillingly realistic, where something like this could happen now. I love the fact of how it immediately grabs your attention instead of wasting your time, and not many stories hook you in so suddenly. The storytelling is a major improvement of previous titles and helped with a new cinematic camera that allows close-ups with characters during conversations and adds more cinematic qualities to the cutscenes. It's phenomenal. If you're confused, don't be. Each game takes place in a timeline in a non-chronological order. I love how if this is your first title, the game fills you in on the lore and it's fantastic. The first things fans were concerned about were the graphics for Fallout 4. Bethesda uses the same game engine used in Skyrim, the creation engine, which feels like an upgrade from the previous ones, but not by much. The game looks amazing, however, and runs at a smooth 60 frames per second on PC but at times the textures for some characters and environment can look very low resolution and have this plastic feel to them. I mean look at your baby, looks like a plastic one, Ugh. but for the most part the engine and new facial expressions given are great, with eyes having a reflective and realistic look to them. So the lip syncing can be off at times, for the most part it keeps up much better than before. Nonetheless I love the graphics even when it comes to its limitations because it can look truly marvelous and I dig how for Fallout 4 Bethesda used a much more colorful color palette rather than than the muddy grays from before. It breathes new life, despite the commonwealth being bathed in radiation. 
The frames aren't always at 60 frames per second. In fact, the frames can heavily dip at random times when you're in areas with many buildings, like in the city. It's really disappointing that it's not just me experiencing this, it seems like the game has yet to be properly optimized for most PCs. Sure, in time it will improve, but as of now it can be very, very annoying. And even PC owners with insanely powerful, beastly PCs are having the same issue. How can I forget that Fallout 4 and the Fallout series all have amazing presentation, especially due to the fact for the Pip-Boy, as your Pip-Boy and Vault-Tec are all a character on their own. They add to the unique qualities of the Fallout series by using quirky and gag-filled cartoons that are reminiscent of the retro cartoons of old. I dig how each quest and perk have unique little animations using the Pip-Boy slash Vault-Boy character. It's all the little things that make the difference and the stylish new use of the character are great. The sounds are incredible as it comes to no surprise, all guns feel unique and sound unique, especially the laser rifle and futuristic weapons, those sound so damn cool. The voice acting is fantastic as in this time, the first time in Fallout history where your character is actually fully voiced and it's great. There are many different voice actors for once as Bethesda actually hired more than just 10 people to voice hundreds and hundreds of characters. <laughs> just kidding Bethesda, I know you hired 15 for the previous titles. Your character sounds great and the key characters have distinct voices. It's really, really good. I can't tell if your aim is horrific or spectacular. Either way, knock it off. The music was composed by Inan Zur, the same man who composed previous Fallout titles. His soundtrack is incredible and rich with over 60 songs, varied with so many different instruments and varying intensities. And I love the use of the piano, and my favorite track is probably the main theme, since it's the one we always hear and I just never ever ever get tired of it. I find it especially hilarious that some of the ghouls in the game, which are basically radiated humans that have been so heavily radiated they don't even age, but they got horribly disfigured. Anyway, some of them have unique ways to talk, and some of the women sound like freaking Vin Diesel. That's what I like to hear. Let's go inside. I'll give you the lowdown. Haha, <laughs> see, I told you. Fallout 4, like most Bethesda games, focus heavily on exploration and it's all up to you. You have complete and total freedom of what you want to do and when. Whether it's an intriguing story mission or side quests that are just as fun, if not more fun, than the story missions. There's much to do. With over 400 hours of gameplay, you get your money's worth in content alone. Now what sets the recent Fallout series apart is the VAT system, which now instead of freezing time completely, it just slows down time and you just tactically and quickly select which parts of the body to attack while using action points. It's always been a great system and it has been improved significantly. Headshots are much harder to pull off without certain perks, so now many times you just have to shoot the legs if you want to incapacitate the enemy or shoot the arms if they have a weapon in their hands you can disarm them too. One of the best improvements is how it adds a new layer of difficulty and it makes it just much more fun. The shooting now feels like modern shooters and each gun feels great. It's a great advancement that enhances the experience making you choose between bats or your gunplay skills. The game has vastly changed the old perk system where you had to meet certain attribute and level requirements to unlock perks. Now you can select which perks you want to invest into. Many fans had a problem with this new system. While 70 perks may sound like many, which they are, I however greatly dislike how if you want to get a single perk in the tree, you have to invest so many levels into that skill. It's really a shame as the system forces you to play one way and completely abandon other skills. Ultimately, the perk system is great, but it is flawed to an extent, and I think it's gonna be up to the players to decide whether they like it or not. It had to be changed this way since there is no level cap, which is just insane and mind blowing. So eventually you will have it all, which is nice, and it's great that it doesn't take forever to level up. It never takes hours and hours just to level up once. That's what I hate about RPGs, but this game, you level up constantly if you're fighting or completing quests. Settlements are a phenomenal new mechanic to the the Fallout series, where you can essentially build towns and houses to attract settlers to farm food for you, tinker and create items that you can scavenge and more. The system is surprisingly deep, yet not too hard to understand. Certain items require power, people need beds and water to be happy, the happier they are, the more they will produce for you. The system does however need to provide more info, just like in my kingdom review, I'm surprised that there is no way to see how many settlers are unassigned and how many are defending or doing farms or anything like that, there's no sort of overall stats, which is really a shame. Many 
Many times I have settlers that aren't doing anything, and there's no way for me to locate them easily or be told easily what they are assigned to. Besides outlines of what they may be doing, it needs some improvements as there's many many settlements to manage around here with an increasing number of people per settlement. To build objects and structures you need materials, and to get some materials you can find them all around the commonwealth, and each object can be scrapped down to basic components like leather, metal, wood and more. Each settlement has junk nearby that can be scrapped, but most of the time you'll have to fill up on junk. This system is one of the best new features to the series, that makes junk actually worth more than you might believe. Sometimes it's even worth more than currency, which in this game is caps, bottle caps. And what other game makes you glad to find junk so you can get that lead from the pencil, the oil from that lighter, the adhesive from that glue, it's great. With all these components, you can also upgrade pre-existing weapons and modify them in almost every aspect, from damage to handling to scopes and more. This new crafting and modding system used for armor, weapons, and other upgrades is so engrossing you can spend dozens and dozens of hours naming and optimizing your weapons and armor. One of the major changes that has suffered, however, besides the new perk system, is the new dialogue system. While it too has been streamlined like the perk system, all conversations offer four choices. Usually good, bad, sarcastic, and neutral choices. Many times when interesting choices come up and you select one, it will advance to the next round of the answers and sometimes completely in missing and ignoring important details from before. If you are like me who loves to hear as many details as possible to the lore and other situations, many times you're just going to have to save and load back before you take a specific path. Luckily Bethesda seems to have caught on to this and now allows you to save during conversations, which helps, but it sucks anyways that you still have to do that all the time. But it is optional. If you don't care, that's fine. I do love how many times you are given colored options that can drastically help you in situations. If your charisma perk is high enough, you can completely receive new dialogue to even solving issues non-violently on top of bonus XP. There are now 13 companions in Fallout 4. Many of them are amazing and memorable. And remember, all companions are invincible, so it's okay if they get vaporized, it's fine. They won't permanently die, they just need a stim pack shot, even if they're a robot. From your faithful canine dogmate who can find items for you, to Strong, the super mutant who gives you random meat from animals and wants to find the milk of human kindness. Why do you want to find this milk of human kindness? Milk is secret to humans. Macbeth say milk makes humans strong. Stronger than super mutants. Whatever you say, buddy. Stay awesome, though. To Piper, the nosy reporter who wants to find the truth and publish it to the world. Some characters like Strong love violence or being tough, while Piper hates it when you're tough and violent and loves it when you're kind. Each companion gives you a unique perk once you max out their relationship with you, which is so great. It's fun to find out what each companion likes and dislikes, and most of them will slowly open up to you and tell you their tragic backstories or more information about them, which is great. Hell, if they like you enough, you can even romance them. Yo, Piper, how about you check out my pipe? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that actually that actually kind of sounds gross right now that I'm saying it. Never mind, forget I said it, Piper. Don't pay attention to my pipe, please. You can, as usual, lower or raise difficulty at any time, which is great. But now, certain legendary variations of enemies will spawn that will always drop some sort of legendary weapon variant that has a unique attribute. The kicker is that the harder the difficulty is, the higher the chance for these enemies to spawn. It is such a simple way to reward the player for playing in higher difficulties and makes the game even more fun. I highly recommend that you play it in at least hard difficulty or very hard if you feeling like you really want that legendary loot drop. Sure, there are many varieties of weapons and ammo, but there aren't just that many based weapons in the game at all. It's all disappointing. While melee weapons have so many cool and unique types, most of the weapons that aren't legendaries are the same that other Fallout players have. There needs to be more weapons for each class and more legendaries because after a few dozen hours, I have yet to kill any single legendary enemy that has given me anything worthwhile in the past 20 hours of play. I don't know whether I am unlucky or there aren't that many given. The loading times for Fallout 4 can be a real drag, however. I mean, even rooms as tiny as they could be required loading times, which ruins some of the immersion and makes you dread when you have to fast travel or just go into buildings. Because of the annoying wait times, they can range from 3 to 6 seconds to 6 to 12 seconds. It's just because the game is not optimized so well. I have seen other YouTubers have similar problems, even with their godly PCs as I mentioned before. Not to mention, Fallout 4 is plagued by glitches ranging from minor annoyances to complete and total file corruptions. <laughs> I mean, look at this, my file game corrupted. From quests not starting, dialogue repeating, to complete and total glitches scratching my game or even my whole computer, which has happened a few times actually. These are problems that have been a problem before in previous Bethesda titles, and it's still an issue here. I can give them somewhat of a pass since the game is so damn huge, but when paying $59.99 for a game, you expect it to be functional for the most part, and some of the bugs really annoy me, like the guns disappearing and causing me to die. Two companions not being able to walk around and follow me properly. The AI can also be very stupid at times for 
the enemies where I am standing clearly in front of them and they don't even shoot me at all. But for the most part, they're okay. Fallout 4 is a truly marvelous game that in my opinion overall meets the hype and rises above it for the most part. I mean, I literally sunk countless hours into this game since launch. When I aim to play for a few hours or do like two quests, I end up playing for like 10 hours and realize the sun is rising and I really need to like review this game or something for you guys. It's new additions of the modding systems that allow you to mod armor and weapons and drugs that enhance your abilities, as well as the new and improved shooting, legendary loot drops, VAT system, settlements, modding and upgrading, companions, and atmosphere of the Fallout world are epic additions to the franchise. I forgot to mention there is a large list of over 1,000 names that certain characters can recognize you by and even call you by. It's so cool, even immature names too. Mr. Fucker. The unique characters that you connect to and the overhauled gameplay changes that improve the game are numerous. The game does have issues, like I mentioned, the game crashing, glitches, disappearing weapons, corrupted saves, badly optimized game engine causing significant frame rates where they shouldn't be, do hurt the game and its enjoyment. I know they will be patched eventually and probably fixed by the community as well since Fallout series are always heavily modded. As of now, however, the glitches and bugs are present and still causing problems among players, myself included. And it's hard to accept for a 2015 release that it is still poisoned by the same glitches at nearly every Bethesda game launch. Despite all the issues, Fallout 4 is, is the best Fallout game to date, even for newcomers. It's too addicting and engrossing in every way possible. The shortcomings from the glitches to the streamlined perk and dialogue systems all don't break the game for me. It's always worth coming back to and worth having your hours sucked away in the best way possible. Fallout 4 is beautiful and slightly flawed for the price tag of $59.99 and everything the game gives you, I have decided to deem Fallout 4 an insta buy and according to our steam friends oh seems like this game has the biggest difference between me and the steam community yet out of 31,372 reviews the game currently holds an 80 percent approval rating seems like many others have had buggier times than myself or the hype train was too much for them tell me below if fallout 4 delivered or not for you guys i'm dying to know peeps once again like every time thank you for watching this long and waiting this long time for this review it took me a while as this game is insanely long so I may have bitten more often than I could chew, this being my first AAA as you know. But I think I know what to expect now and if you want to catch my last review of the Kingdom Review, click here. And my first part of my Hotline Miami Let's Play with excessive cussing, click here. Thank you all for watching and supporting me. Let me know what you thought of this review or anything I mentioned. I hope this was thorough enough for you. Now if you excuse me I have to play more Fallout and select the next game review. Thank you all for watching. This is Random Junk signing off.